everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, you know, so much has been said, and so much will continue to be said, and I've said so much, and you know, a lot of you people have watched a lot of the bridging shows, and we've been doing them for a really long time, Earth time now, and. The message is really ultimately always the same. The message is always about us coming together as, as a human species, as, a, as guardians of this extraordinary planet, to be in a state of service, to be in a state of healing, to be in a state of love, to be beings who are truly love in motion and creatively and collaboratively doing our actions as brothers and sisters. And so much of what goes on on this planet is not about that, is not rooted in that, is not centered in the experience of truth, of love, of connection, of what we call the oneness, dedicated to the oneness, dedicated to that experience of truth. And we know, we know at some point in our being, at some point in our life, at some point in probably every day, each one of us, no matter what path we seemingly are on and what seems important to it, what seems part of our busyness of every day, that there is a deep, abiding, unconditional love and connection between us all, between every animal and every blade of grass, And that knowing, again we know, has to grow, has to be made manifest, has to be realized on this planet at this time. Because in a sense, the time is running out. The time is running out because the disharmony that has been manifested for so long is creating circumstances where it is our destiny and our job and our service to be here now and to be part of the healing to be part of the healing of this incredible planet and its growth into a member of, of a galactic experience of love. And we know we can do it. Together we can. Apart, look what happens. Without that experience of the love, of the oneness, of the connection, look what happens. Look around. Hopefully when you're watching the show, things are different. I mean, the show will take a while probably for people to be watching it. I won't give you the date, but hopefully when you're watching it, he'll say, what's he talking about? I don't remember that. And maybe it'll be really soon. But we know it can be, and we know it has to be. And we know we can't wait. So when I was riding over here, you know, I was just... You know, our vans were full of equipment, and I was just driving over here, and I was thinking, you know, it's a time almost of rededication, of recommitment, that whatever grace and effort and experience we've had before to, to recommit, to rededicate, to be in service, to be in connection, to be treat others as we want to be treated. To do the simple things of love in whatever way we connect to that inner knowing, that within inside of truth, that God within, to rededicate ourselves to coming into that experience more and more. To heal our hearts, to heal this planet, to heal the rupture between all of us. And we can do it. Together we can. So again, you know, we have a guest tonight whose life is dedicated to healing, to service, to bringing a, a gift, a connection that she has been allowed to have in this life to, to the world, to heal each part, each cell, each DNA rupture, each DNA disconnection. 
and doing it joyously and lovingly and committedly and dedicatedly. And we're, you know, we're extraordinarily lucky to have her here. Vianna Steibel is an extraordinary healer, an intuitive, a spiritual teacher. She's an artist. She's a writer. She founded Theta Healing, which is spreading across the world really now. And so many people are coming to experience Theta Healing and its gifts and its abilities and its love and its connection. And it was a gift she was giving that she's offering to the world. And she's committed to spreading that gift and that healing wherever she is called openly and lovingly to share it. And we have music videos as we normally do. And tonight, they're the first time shown probably on television or on the YouTube uh, of an unbelievably gifted and joyous musician, singer, Wah, who's going to be a guest on one of the future bridging shows coming up pretty soon. Just an amazing being and an amazing musician. So we have two videos of hers. And as most of you know, we're in the middle of this, again, healing acupuncture art project that came as a dream, it came as a vision, as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet. That we would offer the opportunity of this means of distri distributing energy and love that to offer the opportunity for people, anybody, any age, any skill level, any country, any format, any size, to produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. And literally we've see, received well over 200 pieces from all over the planet that are so powerful and so beautiful and so dedicated and so committed and so joyous and so loving. And you'll see too tonight and everyone, join us. Be part of it. It's a part of a healing. It's part of an acupuncture. It's just a matter of intent to share that. And then we put them on the shows, as we'll do two tonight. We'll put them on. We do art exhibits. We have one actually in the facility we're shooting at now with probably 25 pieces of, of art from all over the world. And please, go to our website. Heaven to Earth Art is our art project website. Go to that site, look at some of those pieces, look at some of the art from all over the world, and, and come, join us. Join us in intent to heal, intent to come together, intent to collaborate, intent to be collaborative, intent to, to heal, intent to be in love. So join me in a short meditation. Oh, the two pieces are by Marty Jackson and Julie Rose Clark. Marty is from... Texas and Julie is from uh, England and literally the pieces are coming from all over the world. The pieces on the next show, one is from uh, one is from West Virginia and the other one is from a Polish woman who's now living in Germany. I mean if you go to the site and go picture after picture, artist after artist, you'll, your mind will literally be blown. I mean the, 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 the power and the love of it is, is so extraordinary. So join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first WA video and, you know, Vianna will be with us, and it's just an opportunity again. So please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So the first WA video is, uh, she, it was filmed at the Omega Institute, that extraordinary uh, workshop institute, healing institute in New York State. Uh, it was uh, made available to us by the Omega Institute, thanks to them and John Bashar, who's the uh, media works uh, manager at the Omega Institute. And let me read to you, this is the first painting you're probably seeing now by Marty Jackson. It's called Bridging Heaven and Earth. It's an oil on canvas. And Marty is from the Woodlands, Texas. And this is Marty talking about the piece Bridging Heaven and Earth. Heaven lives within the sacred heart of all of us. When we open that sacred chamber and allow the divine essence of our being to pour forth, 
we are then acknowledging the oneness of all things and our unique part in that oneness. That is when we truly bridge the illusion of separation and bring heaven and earth into wholeness. So that's Marty Jackson. Okay, so enjoy the WA video and come back and there will be beautiful things here. Enjoy. back. So yeah, that was a beautiful video from Wa. Uh, thank you, Omega Institute. It was Nama Shavai. You'll hear another part of that a little later on. And the picture you're seeing uh, in between Viana and I is uh, Marty Jackson's uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth. Just an extraordinary, again, part of the art project. Everybody's welcome. Intent to heal, intent to do acupuncture. Please join us. It's beautiful. So welcome. So glad you could be here. Cool. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's cool. So everybody's probably interested in, you know, like, you know, theta healing and how you came to it and, and what it does. What, what is it? What is it? What is it and what does it do for people? Go. Um, go. Um, where do you want me to start? How about the beginning? Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I live in Idaho. Uh, I live in Idaho Falls, Idaho, and I actually was doing readings. And I, um, I've been psychic all my life, so that's what I did. I did readings for people, and I did nutritional counseling, and I did naturopathic medicine, and I was taking care of my little family, and I started having problems with my leg. Actually, I had problems with my leg at first. So 
if you go back a few steps, I ended up divorced. I uh, went and trained to be a nuclear security guard at, this, at the nuclear security site because I was an artist. And that was the only job that paid a decent wage. And I could actually paint and have four days off and work for three days sounded good to me. But I wasn't really cut out for that kind of stuff. And uh, I started having problems with my legs, so I started studying naturopathic medicine. And when I start opened up my shop in Idaho, I had more problems with my leg. And I actually went to several doctors. And at first, they told me I had gout in my knee. I don't know if you know anything about gout, but you don't get it in your knee. <clears throat> you don't usually get it if you're a woman. So I started doing different diet stuff to get better, but I wasn't getting better. Eventually, it got really bad. But as it was getting bad, my readings were getting really good. And I could tell people what was wrong with them and their body, and I could see their angels, and I could see their future. And I was doing really good at that, but I was getting sicker. And so eventually, I ended up in with a doctor, a really pretty good old doctor, in one of these little emergency facilities. It actually took time to look at me because I'd gone to other doctors because I'd had problems with my heart, my kidneys, like everything was falling apart on me. And he, good old doctor, looked at my leg and told me I had cancer. Uh, looked at my femur and told me that I needed to go to a specialist. And I went to the specialist and he told me that he'd only seen two cancers like mine in the entire time he was a doctor. And sometimes amputation helped. So and, and the other option was dead, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So well, you actually, knew it these were two it, not it, it so was, good. <laughs> actually, it was, if you cut off your leg, it can give you like three more months, but that's all it's going to do. Oh, so that was... That the, was... Wow. That, yeah. So that was like a, a semi-wake-up call yeah. for you. But when I, I was doing readings, I just would always go up and ask God, the, and creator of all that is, this energy, for my answers. I'd always get answers, and... I went up and asked if I had bone cancer. I kept getting no. And I got that I had mercury poisoning and that I needed to <clears throat> get the mercury out of my body. From like the teeth and all that? I think so, you know. And I, I um, asked God why he was taking my life. And I got, I was here with or without a leg, so I knew I had to fix it. So I did everything. I did um, cleanses. I did, I did a Scientology cleanse. I'm not a Scientologist, but I did their cleanse. I did a Stanley Burroughs lemon cleanse. I did a lot of cleanses. Um, You're one of the cleanest people on the planet with this probably. thing happening. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they uh, went in and did a biopsy on my bone and found out that um, I didn't have bone cancer, but I had limb cancer. And at the time, I didn't have any insurance, and, and uh, I was poor, and... I, at the biopsy, it actually ended up shrinking my leg. So after about t six weeks, my leg had shrunk, and I was in pretty bad pain all the time. And and uh, and my aunt comes up to see me. We um, in Idaho. I don't know if it's like that anywhere else in the world, but sometimes healers don't always get along together. Sometimes they like fight with each other. Like one's better than another. Or so, I don't know. Very you mean weird. there's a little ego going oh, on on the yeah, planet? Yeah. Lo and behold. <laughs> so, what a surprise. No, so it, before it that, happens quite It's often. true. Right. So before that, I asked what I could do to bring people together, and, and God told me to feed them. So I used to have potlucks and feed all these people. So we put together this potluck, because I really thought I was going to die, because I'd worked on myself. I'd done all these cleanses. I, I was feeling some better, but I was, I was still really sick. And... I didn't want to die. Actually, I really didn't care, if you want to know the truth. I was so sick, I didn't really care if I lived. Yeah, you uh, know? being alive wasn't so great no, at that uh -uh. time. Right. But I had, I had three little kids, and their father, my first husband, is a paraplegic. He's paralyzed, and mm. I didn't think he could take care of them, and so I wanted to make sure I could take care of my kids. So I was kind of in this dilemma. And so we call, I called this great big potluck together so I could actually be with my friends for a little while. And my aunt came. She just showed up out of nowhere from, from Washington. And we were up in the mountains, and she pitched a tent, and she got sick. She got a bad stomachache, and she got sick. And I remember thinking, that's not fair. You know, yeah, I'm, the one who's, my I'm, a, <laughs> you know, I'm the one dying, right. and she's like sick. You know, and I mean, that doesn't you sound really believe the way things go well. <laughs> no, no we're, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, and, 
And uh, I went in and looked inside of her, like I do readings, I could see what's wrong with her, and I could see that she um, had kind of an equal eye. And so I just told it to go away, and it did, just like that. And all of a sudden she was better. And so then I was like, mm. well, that was cool. So I thought about what I did, and I didn't do anything different except do what I did to give a reading. So I thought about it and thought about it. Next day I went to work because it was like a Sunday and I went to work the next day. And this man came in with this pain in his back and I thought, oh, you know, my aunt healed. So I did the same thing again and told his back to get better and it was better. And I experimented on another person before I experimented yeah, on myself. You wouldn't, right, right. <laughs> Let me try this. Right. And uh, so then I thought, well, it can't be that easy, you know. I'd been so sick and yeah, it was really quite a long time of being sick and and so then I uh, thought about it and I was walking to work the next day I was walking I was my, my shop was next to a little metaphysical store and I walked right through the metaphysical store and I stopped went up like the same way I did a reading and commanded my leg to heal and it healed instantly it came back down to normal size the tumor had swollen my leg really big it was gone the pain was completely gone. It was it was gone. So I called my girlfriend and I called the man I was married to at the time, which is not my true love now, but and I called I mean all these different people and told them what happened and we all waited to see if it would get worse or stay healed and it stayed healed. And then about 3 days after I healed my leg is when they started bringing people to me. They didn't even know I healed my leg. They just started bringing me people. They just brought me this little four-year-old girl and put her in my arms and said, "Can you?" God told me to bring her to you to heal her. And from that day on, I've done healings on people. And I wasn't sure exactly what we did. I remember telling the, the grandmother, the great-grandmother, the little girl, that uh, I think it might take seven times to get her healed because, you know, I didn't know if it would heal instantly the first right, time. Right, I don't know right. if I could Give yourself a little space. Right? <laughs> <laughs> don't want to get everybody's expectations up too much. And the little girl had been born with like a heart murmur and her hips had been out of, when she's born with her hips, you know, her legs out of her hip sockets. And she was using these little crutches to walk. And she hadn't gained a pound in like four years. And she was, or two years, because I think she was four at the time. And uh, we started doing healings on her. And two days after, you know, we started doing healing, she started passing all these worms. And then on the fourth day, she got up and said, I can walk to my grandma. And she got up and walked to her grandma. And I thought, I found the answer. All you got to do is you got to go up and ask God, and God will heal it. And so people started coming to me all the time. And I started teaching it. I was already teaching classes because when I opened up my shop, I was really good at reading, so people would ask me to teach them what I was doing. I was like, I'll have to figure out what I'm doing, yeah, but right. I've kind of figured so it out. So it was extremely natural to you. I mean, there was no like technique that you learned. It no. was just it was par it was part of what you were made to do. Right. Part of your right. Well, really, makeup. what happened was the first person came for a reading that I was actually going to get money for. So the first thing I did was like, Oh dear God, please dear God, that got to feed my kids. You got to help me out here. And so what I had found out, what I was doing was I was raising myself above my space and going up and saying, God, Creator, or however you oppose the Creator energy of all it is, this is what needs to be done, take care of it, and I would get all the answers that I needed. And it was, um, you know, so that was all I was to teach it. But when I got my leg healed, I realized, because at the time I was, I was actually married to a hypnotist, so I understood a little bit about theta waves and delta waves. And, and so I uh, had a friend of mine build us an electrosopograph, and we found that that little technique of just going up above your space would bring your brain to an alpha brain wave. And if you said creator or God, your brain would flip into a theta brain wave, and which is something that people do when they fast for long periods of time or right when they go to sleep or in their dream state, they're in that wave. And it takes a long time to get in that wave. And we could do it in like 10 seconds. So then they came and started learning. And then people started coming all the time. They were so sick. And I would reach out and some of them would heal immediately. And some of them I would get, well, they believe they should be sick. You know, and at this time, it was 15 years ago, you know, at this time, the, the things that I was learning, you know, um, 
you know, I was married to a hypnotist. I did know some stuff about hypnosis, but the person I was reading was Joseph Murphy and the power of the subconscious mind and that you could change your mind and your power of your mind. And I'd reach over and touch people and I'd, I'd hear things like, they believe they should be sick or it's in their genes or it's, a pe it's something from another time or place, you know? And I just felt like I couldn't do anything about that unless I did hypnosis or maybe some neuro-linguistic programming or something to actually help them pull out. Because, you know, I, I traded with a lot of great healers, different things. And then one day I got told, go up into Theta and pull the bo old belief and replace it with a new belief. And we did it with genetic things and history things. Like if I touched somebody I'd, and they had leukemia and I'd hear it was genetic, we would go find out what belief they had that was keeping that sickness to them. And over all the years, I found that people had lots of negative beliefs that would pull sickness to them. But it was a lot of times it was the, the positive beliefs. The sickness was actually doing something for them. It was fixing their family. It was bringing people together. It was making them look for God. It was doing something. So we started digging for the bottom negative beliefs because beliefs are stacked on top of each other. So we started digging for bottom beliefs and things would change. I, I remember when we just started doing, just as we were just coming up with changing beliefs in a theta wave. Because we know we can change beliefs. People have been doing affirmations forever. And after 30 days, some beliefs change. But these people were like dying. And they didn't have 30 days. So um, this little boy came to me. He had, um, he had colon cancer. It was everywhere. I went in and saw it. I thought he was dead. And uh, I believed so much that I couldn't, you know, there's nothing we could do about it. But I could see he hated his father. He hated his father. And I said, sweetheart, would you like to forgive your father? And he said, yes. He was, I think he was 14, actually. And uh, I went up and I pulled, I hate my father. I replaced it with forgiveness. And the next day his mom called me up. She's just crying. They couldn't find none of the colon cancer. It was all gone. And then we went, well, there's something here. So once we started doing the belief work, I started tr training people how to do it. And that's what I do. I, I train people all over the world to, to, to find beliefs, you know, for every sickness, including poverty. You know, any sickness or anything that you want to change in your life, you could change by going into your space and pulling a, a, a pattern, a habit, a belief pull it and, and change it without losing what you learn from it, without losing the memory or the good things you learn, but just change a pattern, a habit. And it's been really remarkable to see people heal from that. And now that's what I do. I train people not only how to do it, but I also train people how to teach it. Because the only way you can keep truth on this planet is to spread it. Not to keep it secret, but to spread it. And so I've got, we've got about 2,000 or more teachers now throughout the world and thousands and thousands of practitioners in Theta Healing. And we wrote some books. You can learn it from the book. And I believe everyone can do it. But I do believe that we have a unique technique that actually teaches the brain how to connect with the oneness of the energy of all that is and really let you know you're connected. Because I've done this for years. I mean... Um, in the year 2000, I think it was four, I made Bobby count how many readings I'd done because I read something that Edgar Casey like died after so many readings, and I was like, yeah, you, you know, were getting like, near that <laughs> number. Uh oh, like, oh Bobby, <laughs> get to know. Should we stop now? <laughs> Is there a limit? <laughs> it's funny how after all those unlimited experiences you had, I know, mind it's comes in. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And so, um, yeah, I had her. Uh, Count them up, and we've done um, we've done thirty-seven thousand readings, and, we, and I haven't counted since then. But um, you've passed that, you Casey, at least that I, number. I don't is know. Recorded I just know that Bobby went. You're okay, mom. You'll be all right. But um, right. well, thank God, Bobby was right on it. But you know, I we we believe that we can connect with the creative energy of all that is, and that we can witness, we can actually watch the Creator heal. But it's something to do with that theta brainwave. Over the years, I figure it's a theta. Delta, gamma, theta, delta, gamma wave of some sort. And I haven't been able to 
haven't found an electroencephalograph that can measure the gamma, but we certainly got one that can measure the theta waves, and what part of your brain you're using. So what we'd like to do is get it grafted out so that we could actually prove what part of the brain does healing. Because when you do that, then you can reach everyone. So I teach scientists and, and, and doctors and nurses and just plain old good mommies that want to heal their children. As long as they believe that there's an energy that binds us, an energy of all that is, as long as they believe in the creative energy of all that is, that there's a God, that there's a, then they can, they can do theta healing. But then we've made it a little bit more complicated over the years. Um, we found that people were just going up and connecting to whatever, and we really got them focused to connect to this energy of all that is and be very clear so they don't get weird, you know, because sometimes people get a little... Yeah, when they're out there, they get... They know, get right. way out there. You have to reel you them back in. You disconnect from <laughs> yeah. the ground, kind of. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah. So we found a way to keep them really focused, and so... We do funny things. Me and my husband, we go and get rid of spirits from people's houses. It's really quick and easy, and we still do the fun stuff, but, you know, it's really nice to watch people heal. And I've watched some amazing things heal, and it still has the same amazing excitement as it did before. I was telling you, I healed my car. It's pretty cute. Yeah. So, so I mean, what you're saying is that, in, in essence, you know, the unlimited, we need to tap into the unlimited quality, the oneness quality. And once well, we tap into that, then... Right, right. And the key here is that our brain just can't be told tap into the oneness quality. It has to have something to do. So what we do is we take it into a deep theta wave and we give it a destination. And then that opens up the brain the true possibility of connecting to oneness. I mean, even as we sit here, I can feel everybody in here's heartbeat. I can, I can hear them. I can feel them. You know, I can feel the trees and the grass outside because you're in the state where you're really connected, but you're not overwhelmed. You know, sometimes psychics are connected, but it's almost too overwhelming. And sometimes just teaching them a simple technique can change their world. And I think that the healers have used this brainwave forever. I think, I think the shamans have. I think they have. But actually being able to say this brainwave is what we are reaching makes us step out of the out of the secret corners of being a healer and into the world of saying, look, we can, we can help you feel better. We can take it and change the pain in your body. And, and you the pain in your heart. And your heart's huge. Right. We found a way to actually get rid of, in my opinion, the world according to Vianna. I think that when we're born out to this planet that we pick up all the sadness in every battle, every mother that's lost a child, everyone who's ever experience the pain of and devastation. I think we pick up their sorrow as we go through the birth canal. I think we carry it in our hearts. As and a human being. As a human being. And I think that psychics or intuitives or the people that have this desire to help humanity for some reason, you know, I don't that's know. Their, that's their job and their destiny. You know, right. we carry that. And I think that there's a way to do, get rid of it. So we came up with a, an actual exercise that clears that sor sorrow out of the heart. Because in my opinion, you can't heal the earth if you're too busy crying over it. Right, absolutely. I, I think it's going to be healed with joy and laughter and love and gentleness. And just being able to teach people how to really feel that connected to oneness has instantly, they'll leave class. I had one of my students go home and, and heal his, his sister's two autistic children. I know, it's amazing. We'll come back to some of this. Let's uh, have the second WAV video, which is, again, Nama Shivaya, uh, filmed at the Omega Institute. But let me read you about this painting that you're seeing now. It's uh, from Julie Rose Clark, Death to the Old Paradigms. It's an acrylic on canvas. And Julie is from based Hebden Bridge, England. Uh, so this is what she says about Death to the Old Paradigms. This painting is to remind us not to dwell on the crucifixion, but to focus on reincarnation and the fact that there is no real death. We live on. We live on. Okay, so Waz, incredible video. Here it comes. Enjoy. <laughs>
everybody. Welcome back. So that was Nama Shivaya, the second part of that by Wa. Keep tuning into the bridging shows. Wa will be on one coming up pretty soon for the whole show and do a lot of music. And the picture you're seeing between us now that you saw a little earlier is by Julie Rose Clark, Death to the Old Paradigms. Uh, Julie's from England, did five pieces. Again, if you want to see her pieces, they're all available to see on the website, Heaven to Earth Art. Just extraordinary love and dedication and power. So we were talking earlier, and we're going to talk about uh, you were going to give people like a healing, a meditation. So why don't you like, you know, give a little introduction to that, and then you can do that. Okay. <clears throat> so, so here I was. I was sick, and I would did one thing different, and I, my body healed instantly. And so hundreds of people actually were saw me sick and then saw me well so this is this is the meditation but we have we have added to it um, what we found is that people would just do part of the meditation but everyone had a different vision of what they should connect with so we actually wrote a little pathway to where we want people to be when they do this healing technique and so we're just going to walk you it's two different ways it takes just a few seconds okay, so close your eyes yeah. take a deep breath in <clears throat> okay, and I want you to imagine energy coming up through the bottoms of your feet, moving up to the top of your head, and making a beautiful ball of light. Okay, now I want you to see this ball of light that is kind of transparent, that you can see out of it, but what color is that light? It's like golden. Okay, perfect. Now I want you to imagine going up past the universe, past all the bright white light, or past all the universe, as if you were going through all of outer space. You can see all the constellations, you can see everything, but you're going up past the entire universe. And now the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to see all these bright lights. And you're going to see them. They're bright, and then all of a sudden there'll be like a, a kind of a dark energy, and then a bright light, and a bright light, and a bright light. And now I want you to imagine that after you go through all those bright lights, there's this gold light. I want you to imagine going through it. You can come back here later, but I want you to go through it. And I want you to imagine going into something that feels like thick, thick water, or maybe jelly or jello or something. But it's thick water. It's all these different colors. You may see some different shapes, um, ge geometrical shapes, but you're going through it. And this would be referred to once as the void, but you're going to keep going through this. And as you go through it, it's going to come out on the top into this sparkly white white, white light. It sparkles like snow. It has a teeny bit of blue and pink in it every once in a while, but it sparkles. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. And I want you to see that that ball of light that you're in disappears and all you are is a sparkly white light. Okay, and I want you to feel it going through every part of your body. Okay, and this is the energy that we would call the energy of all that is. Everything has shifted into this energy. And it's from this place that you make your request creator energy of all that is, or however you refer to the creative energy. It is commanded that I see my own body now, or I have a healing on my body now, or I have a healing on whoever you're working for. Thank you, it is done. And now all of a sudden you're going to be into that other person's space that you're working on if you were, and you'd actually see their whole energy in their body start to shift into the sparkly white light. And you would see anything that was wrong with them actually being healed. And then you would go back into your space, kind of back to that sparkly white light yourself. So just imagine that you're back in that sparkly white light. Okay. Take a deep breath in. Now open your eyes. Okay? That energy just told your brain that there's more than just the universe. That there's more than just a place where amazing masters and beings that live, but there's the laws of the universe, that thick jelly-like substance, and that there's an energy that everything is made from. So really, I connected you to the energy of all that is. And some people would call it in different religions, the one. Some people would call it maybe even the Holy Ghost in some religions, but that moment you were really there, your brain waves would go into a very deep theta wave and you could actually watch a healing. There's a second way. You want to do the second way? Sure. Okay, take a deep breath in. Hmm. Now I want you just to feel your feet, your toes, your fingers, your eyebrows, everything, and your whole body. 
Now I want you to imagine that you and your chair are sharing energy. You are your chair and your chair is you. You can feel what the legs feel like and the arms feel like. Good. Now I want you to imagine that you, your chair, everybody here in this whole room, everyone here in all of California, everyone here on all the planet are all sharing energy. In fact, you're sharing planet with the whole planet Earth. Now I want you to imagine that you expand out to the entire universe. And as you expand out to the entire universe, I want you to imagine that you've suddenly become part of these bright lights. And I want you to imagine that you become part of this jelly-like substance. And all of a sudden you're back to that sparkly white light, but everything changes to that sparkly white light. And as it changes, you can feel it go through every cell in your body. Now take a deep breath in and open your eyes. That little teeny meditation takes you very deep into, a, into the brainwave we want to obtain for healing. It ta tells your brain a certain things. First of all, a lot of people go up and they connect with these masters on this, what we call the fifth plane. They, they're spinning at a very high vibration. So we believe that, the, that in Theta Healing that there are seven planes of existence. First, when the molecules first form solid material, next when they form the plants, next when they form the proteins, and then the spirit world, which is like the fourth plane, and then, which vibrates higher. That's why you can't always see it with your eyes. And then the fifth plane is where the masters are. They can create. They use this energy of creation all the time. They vibrate very high. And so to be in that energy all the time is kind of hard on your physical body. So a lot of times healers tap into it, and then they don't, they, they kind of can't hold that vibration forever. And their little bodies sort of feel it. And so there's another one called the, the laws of the universe when you start tapping into light, and music, things like that. And then there's another place where everything is made. And that actually goes back to the very beginning of an atom. It's called the energy of all that is. It's actually the protons and neutrons. And if you connect with that energy, your body can go anywhere. So that means that once you connect to that energy of all that is, you can go and talk to the masters without getting exhausted. You can go and work with the six plane energies. You can go and work with the spirit realm, but you never get exhausted. But in this energy of all that is, you can have instantaneous healings. Um, it's my belief that all the energies heal. There's the right mineral, there's the right vitamin, there's the right protein for every sickness. I believe the spirit world can heal. I believe the masters can heal. I believe the laws can heal. But if you use that energy of all it is, you actually discreate sickness and recreate health. And it's in a fraction of a second. So instead of gradually getting better, you can get better instantly. And that's what we teach our students, is how just to do that simple meditation and how to take it a little bit deeper, like changing maybe a belief that keeps someone sick. Um, because maybe they feel like they'll pull their family together if they're ill. If we teach them that they can pull their family together without being ill, their body will get better. And it's just that simple technique that can change their life forever. And I, I know it sounded so simple, it sounded so easy, that it almost got missed. But in reality, that's the technique we're teaching these people that have these instantaneous healings, just like magic. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> so if you just actually practice that meditation, even if you wanted to, even for like five minutes a day, your body would start to get completely strong and healthy. Because you're just, instead of being separate, because we believe, for some reason, we think our body is separate than the creative energy of all it is, and it's not. And what that little meditation well, we does is We think we're it, separate. Right. As, 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 as everything. As everything. But we're not. And this little meditation brings you into a realignment that, you know, we're not separate. We are sparks of God, and, and we're all unique and special, but we're, we're together. And it just makes a whole mental shift. Mentally, it teaches you that there's more to the universe than what you think. It teaches you that you have the ability to actually just become the molecule itself. And it also does something amazing. It works. Oh, beta wave, nice stuff, all cool stuff. That sounds great scientifically, but I'm going to tell you, there's nothing like watching somebody heal like that. It's just 
all of a sudden you just know that we're part of something really divine and that we're part of we're part of God. But you know, the creative energy of all that is. I say that was lightness because on the fifth plane, you know, I believe the ascended masters are, which use this energy to create all the time. And so I I just think that the energy of all that is is something we can tap into and it's pretty phenomenal. We've taught um they taught artists and writers and people how to do the technique and it's simple and it's fun and it's it's amazing. And would you say that uh, in essence the more you tap into that and the more you recognize that that's what you are rather than what's on your birth certificate, where you were born, all those other identities you have, that that starts a momentum of a healing process of the whole being? I think so. I think that um, you finally realize that you're really something really amazing, significant. You know, ego just starts to disappear. I keep thinking if they do it long enough that we'll actually become aware that we're part of everything that is and we can be kinder to each other and nicer to each other. And How could it be otherwise if you're having that experience? I don't think so. And I know that people that have done it as, as once they learn, and there's so many amazing people, they, they bring their, their magic with them that they actually start using their brain. So I have my brain charted on electroencephalograph. I'm using both sides equally, and, and I, I know that their brain starts to do amazing things that would not normally happen just because they're expanding. I think that they're triggering their pineal and their, their brain into being who they really are. And I believe that it's making a huge difference on the planet. You know, theta means a, a brain wave, but it also is a Greek letter for soul. And so I think really the name would be soul healing if it had another name. But I think we've done this before. There's nobody I've ever taught in class that can't do it. And I think, you know, either this is the easiest thing to teach in the world or our spirits already know how to do all of this. And we're just coming together for great yeah, family just, reunions. Right. And just to remember. And just to remember. And play together. And that's the key word. The word is always play. If we play, and if you're excited and you're having fun, then people heal. And if they're like really serious, then they bring their, you know, and the healer brings their fear. You know, the creator told me that we, we actually, the healer witnessing the healing, because, you know, the creator does it. We just get a chance to witness it. But we can influence the healing about 94%. That's because of how we believe it can be done. But that extra 6%, the person has to want to heal. They don't have to even believe in God. I had this woman come to me once. She had brain, t um, she had melanoma all over her brain. Cutest little thing. Absolutely, positively had no idea who I was. I, I was really in a hurry, so I grabbed her hand, set her down, and just went in and did a healing on her. They all disappeared. All of the melanoma disappeared out of her brain. And I hear her talk to me later. She's like, you know, Vianna, I didn't even believe in God. I didn't even know what you were doing. And quite frankly, dear, I thought you were a little crazy. But, but she healed completely. Just boom completely healed because she just really wanted to be well, healed. Let me ask you something. I mean, how does that work in terms of, you know, healings have happened in the past. They've happened, you know, instantaneously in a lot of different ways. But if the, uh, the energy that brought them into being, the disease that brought them into being, you know, it'll be like squeezing a balloon. So the melanoma will leave here and, you know, it'll find some other weak spot in the human body. Okay, so, good, good, yep. You know, she ended up having, you know, she did go out to do it again. We had to start changing some of her beliefs because I don't believe sickness is actually bad. I think it is a, a little warning signal that we get as divine sparks of God that says something's out of aligned in our life and that we need to realign it. Yeah, and something's so, disharmonious, disease. And it's, it's a feeling and emotion. And so what we do is we go in and we start doing what we call belief work and dig for it. And sometimes it's not just in the subconscious. Sometimes it's inherited by our lovely ancestors who were very kind to hand us down beliefs that, you know, which are, you know, past life beliefs or can be ancestral beliefs as well. And then we also have history beliefs. Um, the belief that diabetes is incurable is a history belief. And we start digging for the bottom answer. We find the answer, change it, and change another way for them to learn this. And the disease is gone forever. So... In the end, it's, it's actually... And, and do their and, you know, lives have to change in their activities? Oh, or yeah. Is it, yeah, they do, and they start to change. But really and truly, Theta Healing is about working on people, and I think that's a way to get their attention. I think the sickness is a way to get people's attention. 
But really and truly, the teachers I've taught, they start clearing their beliefs. And the more beliefs we clear, the clearer answers we get from the divine. And the clearer answers we get, the more things that we have miraculous come into our life. You know, like I told you, I healed my car. It was crashed, and it actually healed instantly. And I think it brings us back into our true divine nature if we just keep cleaning up our beliefs. You know, and over the years, I've healed myself from cancer. And I told you a few years ago, they told me I had congestive heart failure. Well, I don't. I healed that. And about a year and a half ago, I went into a coma in Rome, just working. I got meningitis, exhausted working. I know I had to heal those things for me to be where I am now, but I don't believe I had to do it the hard way, but I did. Um, I know my body's resilient and it always heals. And I think changing beliefs has made my body resilient. You know, people ask me, if you're a healer, why do you get sick? And I'm like, you know what, I'm a person. I'm still a person. Yeah, we're in a human body. And yeah. I still and I am cleaning up and I am getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I have time. You're doing fine. I'm ha I have time. <laughs> I'm amazing enough we're coming to the end of the show. <laughs> so we've done it. I didn't talk really. too much, did No, I? <laughs> I think it was really perfect. And really I mean, people have heard me a lot of times, so you're doing great. So if anybody wants any information on Viana, uh, Wa, the art Call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. That's Alan, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.